13 years after the first Harry Potter book was published, I'm still astonished and delighted by the response the stories met. Even though the seventh book and the eighth film have now been completed, I'm still receiving hundreds of letters every week, and Harry's fans remain as enthusiastic and inventive as ever. So I'd like to take this opportunity to say thank you, because no author could have asked for a more wonderful, diverse and loyal readership. I'm thrilled to say that I am now in a position to give you something unique. An online reading experience unlike any other. It's called Pottermore. It's the same story with a few crucial additions. The most important one is you. Just as the experience of reading requires that the imaginations of the author and reader work together to create the story, so Pottermore will be built in part by you, the reader. The digital generation will be able to enjoy a safe, unique online reading experience built around the Harry Potter books. Pottermore will be the place where fans of any age can share, participate in and rediscover the stories. It will also be the exclusive place to purchase digital audiobooks and, for the first time, e-books of the Harry Potter series. I'll be joining in too, because I will be sharing additional information I've been hoarding for years about the world of Harry Potter. Pottermore is open to everyone from October, but a lucky few can enter early and help shape the experience. I'll hope to see you soon. It was a journey that began back in 1990. I was going by train from Manchester to London, sitting there thinking of nothing to do with writing. And the idea came out of nowhere. I could see Harry very clearly, this scrawny little boy. And it was the most physical rush of excitement. I'd never felt that excited about anything to do with writing. I'd never had an idea that gave me such a physical response. So I'm rummaging through this bag to try and find a pen or a pencil or anything. I didn't even have an eyeliner on me. So I just had to sit and think. And for four hours, because the train was delayed, I had all these ideas bubbling up through my head. First John 4, 1. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but test the spirit whether they are of God because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Have you ever not had a situation where you're in your home and you're getting certain imaginations, certain ideas, certain things that, that come to mind, but when you test them according to the Word of God, they're contrary to what the Word of God wants. And you have one or two choices. You can listen to these malicious demon spirits trying to tempt you, or you can say, no, I'm going to stand with Christ, and through the blood of Christ, I'm already free. Go in the name of Jesus Christ. Obviously, if you're a believer, you're going to say, yeah, that one, Tally. I'm not going to listen to those false spirits. That's a good choice. But the problem is, most who are saying that they agree with me on that are actually allowing their children to participate in things which are not something that honor God. And that's why I started with the origins of Harry Potter. Because many of you think that these are just little books that just come up and, and that she has an amazing imagination. But the Word of God tells us to be very careful with imagination. 2 Corinthians 10.5 says, Casting down imagination, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, and bring it into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. As she was in that train in 1990, she was in a position where she felt this powerful rush come over her. And immediately, out of nowhere, the idea of Harry Potter came. And when I'm telling you that the idea of Harry Potter came, I'm talking about the whole idea. In different biographies by J.K. Rowling, she describes the fact that she could clearly, visibly see Harry Potter. Uh, there's even biographies showing the early pictures that she wrote right after she got out of that train. 
And if you look at those pictures, those pictures are identical to what Harry Potter looks now. Everything from the skinny body to the eyeglasses to every other character. It's, it's, it's amazing. So out of that train ride, whatever imagination came over her, whatever spirit came over her that encouraged her to do this, we have to test the fruit. And when we test the fruit of those books, according to the Word of God, we clearly see that these books, the fruit is not good. The fruit is not one that edifies. I know, I know, Tally, you can't take things too seriously. We live in 2011. We may live in 2011, but God's still the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. And He loves our kids. And He loves our families. And the world that we live in is just continuously trying to ruin the value of the family. Everything from cartoons to TVs to music. Nowadays, if you go to a PG-13 movie, they show more sexual content than in the 1980s or Freddy Cougar movie or, or a Jason movie. You know? And it's amazing. But what we tolerate becomes our standard. And the church is tolerating so much so much let me show you something else because you have to understand a little bit more about the character of JK Rowling she grew up in very difficult situations before she became a billionaire and even now she's still a person who tries to be as humble as possible okay but the spirit that spoke to her is not the spirit of God you must understand that okay check this out she's talking about the letters that she gets now from people like me and others who complain about the books look at what she says look at the pride look at the boldness and look at how she's straightforward with you and tells you that she's not concerned about whether your kids feel safe or not Serious check for their out. children i got a horrible letter on book two very very stuffy letter from a mother saying um this was a very disturbing ending and i'm sure a writer of your ability will be able to think of a better way to end the next book um so basically liked it till two thirds of the way through but um, if you could really address this issue in future and I'll be back in touch if I find you unacceptable and it was at that point I snapped and I wrote back and said don't read the rest of the books you're sincerely Joe Rowling there's no point I mean there's no point I'm not taking dictation here do I care about my readers profoundly and deeply but do I ultimately think that they should dictate a single word of what I write no no, I am the only one who should be in control of that. And I'm not writing to make anyone's children feel safe. In the Time Magazine interview, which I am going to post as well in the More Information tab, she was asked a wide variety of questions. And as always, J.K. Rowling is very upfront. You see, that's the thing here. She's very upfront about her thoughts. She's not hiding anything from you. You know, she's not hiding anything from you. But the problem is a lot of believers, they try to justify the fact that this is okay for children. Understand that as adults, okay, you can, you can tell the difference between certain things and certain things. Kids cannot. Kids cannot. And I'm going to show you pretty soon that even she says that these books are not for very young children. So she's telling you this, but what are you going to do with this, parents? That's the key thing here, okay? That's the key thing that you have to understand. When asked about her favorite holiday, she says Halloween. Halloween is her favorite holiday. So, let's talk about Harry Potter. This is straight from her words in the magazine. I consciously wanted the first book to be fairly gentle. Harry is a very protected when he comes into the world. From the publication of The Sorcerer's Stone, I've had parents saying to me, My six-year-old loves it. And I've had qualms about saying, Oh, that's great because I've always known what's coming you see when she was on that train whatever spirit spoke to her whatever imagination came over her she's known from that day when the book was gonna end I want you to know that and if you look at all of the interviews that she does on Oprah A&E 60 Minutes she's very upfront with this so she's known from the very beginning that this book is gonna turn a little bit darker as it as the kids get older with the book so she's had qualms about it, even saying, oh, that's great, because she knows what's coming. Look at what she says here. So I have never said these books are for very young children. In the interview, she goes on to talk about how when she first started reading the book to her child, she was very concerned. She, the writer of the book, 
was very concerned because she wanted to make sure that this book was not too difficult for her kid. Okay. In another part of the interview, they asked, she asked, she says, "Is evil attractive?" Yes, I think that's very true. And you can read all of this in the more information tab, my friend. She's being very upfront with you, parents. She's telling you very clearly that from the very beginning, she knew that this book was going to start out slowly for kids, and little by little was going to take him into more of an intense, um, an intense saga. She's killing. She's telling you clearly. She does not let your opinion dictate what she writes. She's not concerned about making the book safe for you. These are her very own words. But the problem is, the lot of, a lot of the people in congregations, they like to live in denial. It's time for you to take those blinders off and understand that these books are dangerous for kids. They're dangerous for kids. Kids believe this stuff. In her interview with Newsweek with Mr. Jones, Roland talked about the letters that she gets, and these letters actually concern her. See, that's the problem. She's more concerned about the kids than you are. Look what it says. They've asked her about the letters that she gets, and what she does is she actually has people that filter the letters, and they filter them so that she can get some of them that really concern her. Look what it says. Yeah, I have help now. But the letters, I, the letters I get, I don't know if I should actually say this on Newsweek, I have set a criteria for letters I want to see personally, so they will get filtered, and they will get handwritten replies. I get letters from children addressed to Professor Dumbledore, headmasters at Hogwarts School of Witchcraft. And it's not a joke. Look at her, she's talking here. And it's not a joke, begging to be let in to Hogwarts and some of them are really sad because they want it to be so true so badly they've convinced themselves that it's true so those are some of the ones that get pulled my friend I'm not here to lecture you any more than you already know I think I'm preaching to the choir here the word of God tells us in Isaiah 44 25 causing the omens of boasters to fail making fools of diviners causing wise men to draw back and turning their knowledge into foolishness. The word of God is very clear when it comes to witchcraft. And even if you're not a believer at the present moment and you're hearing me, if she is concerned about children more than the parents are, I mean, it's okay that we have to work so much. It's okay that we have to make videos on YouTube. But nothing comes more important than your family. Nothing. And when you have a family, when you have children, there's nothing more important than you understanding that kids absorb everything you do when you argue with your husband when you argue with your kids when you argue with your neighbor when you lie on the phone and you tell them don't lie but you're on the phone lying everything you do your kids are absorbing it and when you allow kids to get this little seed inside of them this seed is eventually going to germinate and it's going to turn into something bigger I'm not telling you that automatically when a kid reads that book they're already Harry Potter and they can grab your broom and start swinging and saying all that nonsense and do it no but these are seeds that are planted in them okay witchcraft is rebellion and when they start rebelling against you and when they start falling for things that are not of God I don't want you to be in a position where you say oh but I've been a great parent yes you may have been a great parent based on your standards but according to the Word of God God wants us to do better and now we're in a position that JK Rowling is launching a new website called Pottermore. Write it. But basically, this is a website for kids to go, read her books, and read things that nobody else has seen about Harry Potter. So, be very, very careful with these things. This new Pottermore website is dangerous for kids. I've seen the behind the scenes of it, and there's things in there about making potion. There's things in there about different spells and witchcraft things these are seeds that are going to be planted in your children and when your kids rebel against you and when your kids go into Wicca and when your kids go into all of these things I just don't want you to have an excuse be very careful my friends the Pottermania website is dangerous for kids okay these books are dangerous for kids let them read the Bible if they want to read something let them read the Bible 